this is Sean Wilson from Epicenter Cycling. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the 2021 Trek Verve Plus 3. This bike has been crazy popular at Epicenter, so I, I just wanted to touch all aspects of this bike. There's a high step version and a low step version. This is an ex this bike in particular is an extra large high step. I'm 6'2". This bike fits me perfectly. You can see this bike is, we call it like a comfort hybrid style bike where the handlebar is adjustable, your, your, your back, your trunk angle is pretty upright. You're going to be really relaxed. It's going to take a lot of pressure off your hands and shoulders. You can adjust the stem up and down for your preference if you didn't want to sit this high up. Um, but definitely a very comfortable posture. This model has the Bosch Active Line Plus motor, which has 50 newton meters of torque, plenty for the majority of hills around your city. Um, there, it's very smooth. It doesn't jerk you up to speed. Um, a lot of people appreciate the torque sensor built into this motor. So as you're as you're riding, if you're lightly pedaling or mashing on the pedal, it'll slightly adjust to to your output, which is just feels like a bike. It kind of, well, I tell people the bike, it just feels like the wind's behind your back all the time. It's really nice. This bike in particular, you'll notice the battery is inside the frame. That's called the power tube battery. It's a 500 watt battery. Um, so you get a really good range. I would say in this model, about 20 to 80 miles. And that, you know, the, there's a lot of variables with that. Um, depending on the hills, the assist mode that you use, um, the rider weight, the wind, how much power you're putting out. Uh, but in general, you can go on a really long ride with this bike and on one charge and not feel like you're limited by the bike at all. This model is the first model in the Trek lineup that you can add a second battery. So these mounts right here allow for that. Um, we've had a couple people do that. So if you want to have it in the higher assist for longer, or if you just want to go even on longer rides, that's a nice option. This model has the Bosch Purion display. So the Purion display, so if you start out in the off setting, the motor disengages really well. You can ride it like a normal bike. You don't feel a ton of drag. A lot of the other motors on the market, you'll, you'll feel the drag when the motor is off. This one disengages really well. If you want a little bit of assist, you just hit this plus button here. Eco is the lowest level of assist. Then it goes to Tour. Then it goes to Sport. Turbo is the highest. Now, Eco adds about 40% of, of maximum support. The Tour setting adds about 100% maximum support. Sport is about 180. Turbo is 270. 270 uh, percent of maximum support. So it's it's a lot of assistance uh, between these four settings and again all the way down goes off. If you needed to walk up a steep hill and you didn't want to ride it, when you're in an assist setting there's a walk mode where you press this button here and you hold down the plus button. So while it says walk plus, if you, if you hit that, the bike will go. And that will kind of offset the weight of the bike and allow you to push the bike up the hill. Um, there are also other functions on with this display if you hold the negative button. So you hold the negative for about two seconds and then you let go and it'll say trip so you can keep track of how the distance you're going on each ride. If you want to reset that at the beginning of each ride you hold down both buttons and now you're back to zero. Hold negative again for two seconds, let go. That's your total, that's odometer of the bike. So if you want to keep track uh, of your maintenance intervals and see how many miles you're riding per year, use that odometer uh, function. Hold the negative again for two seconds. This is the range function. I like to keep it on this setting uh, because I don't want to run out while I'm in the middle of a ride of, of battery life. So right now it's we're at four bars, four out of five. It's telling me I got 50 miles in the eco mode. Now this number will change while you're riding. So if you're on a hill, you're going up a steep hill, the, it's using more battery, that number will shrink. You're going downhill or on the flat, 
it'll increase. So this will adjust while you're riding. So I'm using this in combination with my battery indicator here um, to make sure I can get back to the house uh, without running out of a battery. Okay, you hold the negative again. Then you're back to the setting that just shows you the assist. Now, usually when people first start out, they like to start with this setting so they can easily, it'll always stay on the assist mode. Now, when you're in the range function, so let's say we're in eco, goes back to 50. Um, when you hit the plus button, it'll, it'll tell you what assist mode you're in and then it goes back to the range function again. Okay, support, or sport mode, it says 21 miles. Turbo, it says 19 where it's at right now. And again, that number will change depending on your hill or going downhill. To charge the bike, we're gonna turn this off for right now. To charge the bike, there's two different ways to do that. One, you can remove the battery. So to remove the battery, you're, you're gonna put the key on the left side here. You're gonna pull the key to the back. The battery will come out about half an inch and then you press on this little tab here and then the battery will come out all the way. So let's say if you were to lock up the bike outside and you want to bring the battery inside to charge, this, you would remove the battery. Trek has integrated part of the frame that mounts directly to the battery. They've designed this carrying handle so when you remove it, easy to take it inside with you. This also is part of the locking mechanism here. So this is a lithium ion 36 volt, 13.4 amp hour battery, 500 watt. With the Bosch power tube design, we've had little to no problems with their batteries. They use top of the line internal parts. That's one benefit of Bosch is that you're getting the highest grade battery design. They have a lot of experience with batteries over the years and the motors, super durable. If you want a bike that's gonna be low maintenance, get a bike with a Bosch system. They're very, very popular. Um, Trek has been making e-bikes a long time. They've gone through iterations. Bosch has gone through you know, three, uh, four iterations of these motors now. So they are, they're super durable and we've had a great experience in the store with Bosch. So to, to put the battery back on, there's a, uh, there's a small hole here and a guide that, will, that you're gonna set the battery on and that will kinda s allow you to aim the battery in properly. Now you don't wanna just jam it in there because there are these metal tabs here that um, you can bend. So you just wanna softly set it in there and then you're gonna press down on this little carrying handle here. You're gonna press down on that and then you're gonna turn the key backwards all the way, press down on the battery, and then you go forward with the key and it'll stay locked in there. So that's how you put the battery back in. Now, if you don't want to take, remove the battery to charge it, there is a port on the, on the left side of the bike and you can plug directly into the bike right there. So that's nice and easy. So usually when I'm talking to customers about the assist, I also review the gears. Now, I, we, I told you a little bit of how the, it's sensing your torque. You also want to be aware of your cadence. So your shifter over here, this is nine speeds on the Verve Plus 3. There's two different levers. This lever is going to shift to a lower gear. The lever behind it is going to shift to a higher gear. Now the lever behind it, you can push it or you can pull it. It'll do the same thing. The, lev the front lever is going to always shift to a lower gear. This lever is always going to shift to a higher gear. It doesn't matter which way you go. So that's kind of nice. If you want to keep your finger on the brakes at all times, you can do push-push. Or if you are used to push-pull, you can do that. These, um, so regarding the 9-speed drivetrain, it's important that you have a really smooth cadence. If you're pedaling very slowly, the motor is not gonna assist how it's designed. You wanna be in the right gear to be moving your pedals nice and quick, really smooth pedaling, just as a normal bike is designed. 
Nine speeds is plenty for an e-bike. It's super smooth. This Alivio derailleur is has been out for over 15, 20 years now. Um, it's very durable. Um, we have very little problems with this derailleur, so this is a bomb-proof design. So that's the shifting. Uh, regarding the brake system, these Shimano hydraulic brakes are super powerful. They are um, they use mineral oil. It's very low maintenance. You do have to pay attention to the pad wear. Now, if you come in epicenter when we, we do the tune-ups, we'll ins the mechanic will get their eyes on the bike and recommend it. But if you're riding a ton, you might want to visually look at the brake pad yourself and make sure there's some meat on the pad so you don't go all the way down to the metal. Once you go down to the metal, you can, def you can easily ruin the disc brake rotor. And you don't want to do that. Um, other things to be aware of would be you do not want to touch the rotors or get any oil on there. So when you're applying the chain lube, you want to be careful that you're, you're not spraying chain lubricant all over the place. Some people get a little excited with the chain lube and uh, they end up contaminating the brakes. So you got to be really careful with that. If you look at really closely, there's kind of two different ways you can look at the brake pad where if you visually look straight down, you can see that there's about uh, maybe a maybe an eighth of the brake pad sticking out of the caliper at the bottom here. So as that gets close to the, the metal backing, that's when you want to come and have us replace the brake pads. Now the rear always wears out before the front. So definitely keep an eye on the rear. Most people use the rear brake more. That's why it's going to wear faster. Now transporting this bike, this is a 54 pound bike. You don't feel the weight at all when you ride. Actually it adds a lot of stability. Um, when you have the assist, you don't feel the weight at all. Now when it's off, you're going to be pushing a bike that's a little heavier. The motor disengages so well. It's, it's, it actually rides really nice. Um, but let's say if you were to lift the bike up in your car when you're transporting it, that's a good time for you to remove the battery, okay? Um, that'll probably save between six and eight pounds. Um, those batteries are pretty heavy. So yeah, remove that battery. Um, but this is a really light aluminum frame. Trek specs this bike with really light components. So um, for a $3,000 e-bike, 100 watt battery, 54 pounds is it's actually really good. Doesn't feel sluggish at all when you're riding. <clears throat> now this bike has a suspension C post. When you're sitting really upright, most of your body weight's on the seat. There's less weight on your hands. So you don't need front suspension when you're sitting upright either. So what they do is they put suspension in the C post. You can see there's just this little bit. That's all it is. And that little bit really does take the edge off the bumps when you're at speed. Now there's another C post that you can upgrade to called the Cane Creek Thud Buster. A lot of customers do that if you've got really rough roads or if you want to do a little bit more gravel riding. We can change that out. They have a 40, I think a 40 millimeter and a 70 millimeter version. Um, but this surprisingly it doesn't look like it does much, but it helps a ton on the trail not, or on the, on the pavement. Also, the tire width. These tires, the Bontrager E6 tire, this is a 700 by 50 C tire. So 50 is a, a nice size to, to the, where you have enough volume that you can really decrease the air pressure if you want a smoother ride. Now these tires are rated for 30 to 60 PSI and generally that you will adjust that depending on your weight or, and how smooth you want. Um, but in, I would say on average, if you run around 40 to 50 PSI um, in the front tire and maybe a little bit more in the rear, um, you'll be good. If you're a lighter rider, yeah, bring it down to 30 and it'll be a lot smoother. So this bike has an adjustable stem. You can easily adjust it. Six millimeter Allen wrench. Loosen it here. You'll feel there's specific notches as you adjust the stem. If you loosen the bolt, you can go all the way vertical. I usually don't recommend to go this extreme because it affects your steering all the way down. 
Most people are going to kind of run it between here and here, but if you need to go here, try it out. Now when you adjust the stem, let's say if you were to go to this extreme, now the handlebar is at a different angle. So then you loosen these four bolts here and then you can reposition the handlebar. You have to pay attention to the handle, the, there's markings on the handlebar so you can keep it centered. And so as you adjust it, you'll feel it kind of fall into a notch. You can see I'm kind of wiggling side to side so I can feel that it's into that notch. And then we're gonna torque it down. It does say a torque setting here, 22 newton meters if you have a torque wrench. Just gonna get it snug for right now. You wanna pay attention to the angle of the grips so it's supporting your wrist, but it's not forcing your wrist to come be up or down. It's just nice and comfortable. Generally, we adjust hand, the, the brakes so when you're sitting on the bike, your arms can be straight and relaxed and it's not forcing your wrist up and down. So that's usually really comfortable. Now, if you're in between those notches, the stem can come loose. If that happens, try to find that sweet spot and then uh, tighten it again. Alrighty, so this bike comes with the MIK rack system. So there are accessories that are designed to lock in to the top of this rack. This gray button here, you press this in and it'll pop this in and out. There's a tool that makes it easier to access if you're trying to get them back here. Um, but this is the Bond Trigger MIK utility trunk bag. So if you just want, throw some items in there. Uh, there's also a basket that pops in the top. Take it off and go in the farmer's market, just go in the store. So that's another option here. Bond Trigger makes the city shopping bag. This is a $115 bag that clips right on the side of the rack. Super easy, you can adjust these bags for different rack systems, but it just hangs right on the side. There's a Velcro strap at the bottom that you can strap down here if you don't want it flopping around. Look, plenty of space, it's pretty much a full grocery bag size. There's a side pocket also. I generally like to put one on each side, but you could start with one. You're not gonna have a ton of storage. Ortley bag, we sell a ton of these. This is like a full dry bag. This has this quick release design. You just pull up on the tab here. Just clips on. Super easy. Just pops on and off. Ton of stores. These expand out. Nice size. Again, uh, these usually come as a pair. They do sell a couple of versions that are reflective, that are individual. Alrighty, so maintaining the Trek Verve Plus 3. At home, there's a few things you're gonna need. Floor pump, you're gonna top off the tires once a week. Chain lubricant. You're gonna clean and lube the chain every 100, 150 miles of riding. So this is a, a Bond Trigger dual charger pump. Again, these tires are 30 to 60. PSI. This is a 700 by 50 C tire. So if you ever get a tube, that's the size you're going to need to uh, talk about to get a tube for this bike. This is a Schrader valve. You're going to put the pump directly on the valve and then you pull up. And then the pump will tell you. It has a nice gauge here. It's going to tell you how much the size in there right now. It's 40. This pump you can change between high volume and high pressure. So I'll go to high pressure above 40 and it's nice and easy. All right, so we're going to go up to 50 PSI here. Okay, and then we're going to release this lever down. Now sometimes when you release this, you start hearing air come out. Don't worry about it, just wiggle the pump side to side, nice and softly. The air you hear is coming out of the hose. So don't be concerned that you're losing air here. Now some people break this valve if they try to rip it off super fast at an angle. You just kind of want to wiggle side to side and lightly pull it up. 
this is just a little dust cap. You can put right back on the valve. So you're gonna pump up, pump up tires at least once a week. That's the best way to prevent getting a flat tire. Now, keeping the chain clean and lube is super important. We in the store use the Dumont Tech chain lubricant. This is the light version for pavement bikes. They make an original one for riding in the dirt that's a little thicker. That's the, the darker blue stuff. But the yellow is great for pavement bikes. It stays very clean. It's a plastic base. It bonds to the metal so it doesn't attract dirt and grime. So what I do before every ride, so I'm lightly applying pressure to the bottle and I'm just back pedaling. Nice and slowly. You notice I'm not doing this fast because I don't want to spray the lube everywhere. Once you do that for a minute or two, take the rag again, wipe off all the extra. Alrighty, so tightening the kickstand, there are two bolts that, that mount directly into the rear of the bike. And you do want to check these on a regular basis because the kickstand tends to move around when you're hitting bumps on the road and these bolts can come loose. They are Loctited on there, but just check them once in a while. If you ever want to adjust the angle of the seat, you can tighten this bolt, it'll tilt the nose down. Tighten this bolt, it'll tilt the nose up. We generally try to get the seat pretty level with the ground or a little nose up for the comfort seats. But if you feel pressure on the front of the seat, you can tilt this down again by tightening this front bolt here. If this gets really tight and you can't go anymore, then you can loosen this one and that'll allow you to tighten the front bolt more. If you need to remove the wheels, this bike has a bolt-on axle and it's a five millimeter Allen wrench. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the bike vertical, use your five millimeter, undo this bolt, and this um, axle needs to come out all the way. You can pull that out all the way, and then you can remove the wheel. Now when this wheel's off, make sure you don't squeeze the front brake. Okay, because those pads will close on you. Okay, when you go to put the wheel back on, you're going to set the drop the um, axle of the hub here, and you're going to line it right to the drop out here, and you're getting the rotor in between the brake pads. You're going to set the hub right in the drop out, and you're getting the rotor to go between the brake pads here inside the caliper. And you'll notice the bike is vertical, so I'm just allowing the weight of the bike to hold the wheel in there now. And then I'm gonna put the axle back in. Now the axle is gonna thread in to this side. This stays on the bike, this is bolted on. Okay, so this little piece in here is, is gonna move as you tighten it. So we're gonna push the axle in now. Get your Allen wrench, five millimeter Allen wrench. All right, this is everything you need to know about the Trek 2021 Verve Plus 3.